My name is Eric Coslin, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Systems. I will give a presentation and demonstration about policy-based routing with path monitoring. This is a new feature in the 7.2 release. So let's talk about some related routing capabilities. Since the very inception of the Cisco Secure Firewall, we have supported in the Management Center Service Level Agreement or SLA monitoring. This can identify and avoid lost routes. In the 7.0 release, we took a feature that already existed in the firewall, ECMP, but it required the use of FlexConfig. In other words, you had to write statements directly to the data plane. We moved that capability into the management center in the 7.0 release. We had a similar situation with policy-based routing. It required FlexConfig. In the 7.1 release, we moved that into the management center. At the same time, we added application-based routing, allowing you to base your routing decisions on the application being accessed. Now in the 7.2 release, we added capability. We added path monitoring to policy-based routing. That is the focus of this presentation and demonstration. Here's an example of a static policy-based routing configuration. Notice we're doing ECMP through ISP1 and ISP2 to YouTube, and we're sending our Outlook traffic through ISP3. As secondary paths, we can send YouTube traffic through ISP3 or Outlook traffic through ISP2. And our goal is to take this static PBR configuration and understand how we can make this dynamic. What we do is we steer the traffic based upon dynamically monitored interface statistics, round trip time, jitter, packet loss, and mean opinion score. We will update the PBR module every 30 seconds, and the PBR module can then change the routing behavior. We can do this by pinging the next hop. We can use auto, which means try IPv4, and if that doesn't work, go to IPv6, or we can specify an IPv4, IPv6 next hop or we can set up an IPv4 or IPv6 IP address to ping. Note that VTI monitoring can only use the user configured IP address option. On the right, we give you an architecture diagram for your reference. Here we show the inline documentation available when you try to add the forwarding action when you're configuring policy-based routing. Let's move on to the demonstration. What we're going to do in the demonstration is inspect the existing ECMP configuration and the static PBR configuration. Then we're going to modify that PBR configuration so that the YouTube traffic will go through the interface with the least jitter and the Outlook traffic will go through the interface with the least packet loss. So let's start in the object page of the Management Center. I wanted to show you that we created two access lists, one for Outlook, one for YouTube. These are actually very easy to create. You just add an access list, add an ACE, and you can select an application for that ACE. I want to show you something else here. Notice we don't have any route maps, which might seem odd to you if you're familiar with PBR. And in fact, if we log into the firewall, we'll actually see that we do have a route map. This route map is system generated and hidden from the user in the management center. Notice you can actually see YouTube has some sort of priorities and Outlook has some interfaces listed in order. 
We're going to understand this better when we go to the UI page. Notice we created a traffic zone for two of the outside interfaces, and we have equal cost paths for our default route. Now here we see different numbers because these are the priorities that we configure with PBR. We're going to do load balancing without the traffic zone, and we have a secondary path. To and in the case of Outlook, we simply have an order of the two interfaces. Now let's make this dynamic. We're going to enable path monitoring. Here we see that we're going to first try IPv4 and IPv6. That's a default. We could specify the next hop protocol or even a next hop IP address, but we'll stick with the defaults. We need to do this for all of the interfaces. And now let's go back to the routing and modify the PBR configuration. It's really quite simple. We just change the action to minimum jitter in the case of YouTube and to minimum packet loss in the case of Outlook. And that completes our configuration. Let's deploy these changes and I'll speed up the deployment for purposes of this a demonstration and now you can see the changes to the route map. Notice that we now specify jitter for YouTube and loss for Outlook and that concludes my presentation and demonstration. Thank you very much for your time.